Hey, this is Joe Cornish. I'm the writer and director of Attack the Block. Welcome to the Attack the Block commentary. Thanks for switching it on and listening to this. I'm joined here by the cast of Attack the Block. If Woo! you could introduce yourself, you, Simon. Uh, Simon, um, Howard, Biggs. I play Biggs. My name is John Boyega. I play Moses. It's Alex Esmel. I play Pest. Leon Jones and I play Jerome. Franz Drame playing Dennis. So let's start with uh, DVD commentaries just in general. Do you guys listen to DVD commentaries at all? Have you ever listened to I a do. DVD commentary? Franz? Yeah, what I do. I think DVD commentaries are all right. What have you listened to in the past? Ah, oh, Lord of the Rings DVD commentary. Yeah? I've what? listened to that about eight times. Yeah, I've listened to that. <laughs> well, Leon Jones, what DVD commentaries do you um, like? I think I can't remember the one I listened to. That's Great, good one. answer. Yeah. Alex Esmer. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, I actually haven't listened to any. Honest, honesty, best policy, Simon. Um, Lord of the Rings, I think the third Lord movie the I, I listened to. Third one, I John Boyega. Tim Burton's The Planet of the Apes. Good one. So, mm. have we got opinions about DVD commentary tracks? Because here we are doing our own one, and I've got <laughs> opinions. Like, I don't like it when the cast talk about the weather on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Sorry, I'm gonna have to mention the weather on some of this. It's true. It's true. I don't like. It. I don't like it when they spend all the time talking about how amazing everybody is and how brilliant everybody is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody was amazing. So, so yeah. what you want is real. You want something. Yeah. I don't real. like it when there are long pauses. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't like it when people just um, sort of go stuff like, "Oh, look at those traffic lights." So we're going to try and make this a really good commentary. Yeah. 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 Okay. So here we go. Look at this. Oh, who's that hottie? <laughs> oh, so look, we're already my doing bad. all the things we said we wouldn't. <laughs> oh, my bad. So the first thing I want to ask you is where you. And we'll go around you one by one. Where you were when you first heard about this film? What the first thing you heard about Attack the Block was, Simon Howard? Um, I was in college. And my drama teacher Stuart was like, "Oh, um, there's a new <laughs> film." <laughs> yeah, yeah Stuart. He was like, "There's a new film, and, and it's how, gonna come." How and there's old auditions. Were you at this point? I was, I was now seventeen. No, I was sixteen. I think you're I was seventeen turning now. 17. No, I'm you, eighteen now. Oh, you're eighteen now. Yeah. So you were turning seventeen when yeah, you first heard about the film. Yeah, I was turning seventeen. And then he said that there's auditions on Friday, and it was like Wednesday. So. I got ready, came in on Friday. John Boyega. Uh, online audition site. Really? Yep. And I saw a bunch of like proper chavs and it said. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Like, like there was an imagery of like some chavs with Lonsdale. <laughs> I saw that thing. Lonsdale yeah. hoodies. So that's an interesting thing we should we hmm. should talk about, like the imagery people use to describe the film and stuff. Uh, especially, geez, man. especially that word chavs, chavs. people use yeah. a lot, which oh, isn't is annoying. which isn't it's really wrong. accurate when it <laughs> comes to the people wrong, in the film. Definitely. But let's keep on going, asking you like, how, and how old were you, John, when you when you when we uh, first seventeen seventeen when yep. you first heard about the film, mm -hmm. Alex? Um. I'd just turned 16 actually. Jeez. My birthday had been like two months before and uh, I was at college doing drama and uh, on the day we had like a double lesson, two hours of drama and after the first hour the teacher was like, okay, um, there's a woman coming in from this company and she wants to audition you for this and I was just like, I ain't going to get it, I'll take the piss and have a laugh and I got an audition after that. So Good I work. started taking it seriously. Leon Jones? Um, I was at... Uh, a uh, drama workshop that with Mayhem Group and then um, one of the casting directors came, I think Lucy, and she was like um, holding like improvisation games. Like It was an audition. This is like, Lucy Pardy. Yeah, Lucy Pardy. Yeah, yeah, Lucy did Pardy. the casting on the Woo! film with, with yeah, Nina Gold. Lucy Pardy. Yeah. Pardy. Oh, and like, she was, um, we were doing this improvisation game, but at the time we didn't know it was an audition, but then she took our details down and then she was like, oh, and I'll give you a call. And then after that I got a call and then we had to go for more auditions after that. Franz Drame. Yeah, my um my agent gave me a call one day, just like, hey, Franz, is this really interesting new project? Does she talk like that? <laughs> yeah, no, actually, she, kind of speaks, she speaks to me more like, hey, Franz, is this really interesting? She kind of speaks like that. But no, she's like, yeah, there's this interesting project, and um, it's about aliens and a council state in South London. So I was kind of like, hmm. And okay. you were how you were how old? I was um 16 at the time. How old were you, Leon? Um, yeah, I was 16 as well. So you were all about 16, 17. 17 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And we're now what? We're now... 18. 18. It's now pretty much yeah. a, year a year after later. we shot the film, isn't it? Yeah. This time last year, 
-hmm. in 2010 we were shooting. Mm -hmm. So here's my next question. My next question is what experience had, had you had with acting and especially acting in front of cameras when you auditioned for this film, Simon? Um, I didn't really have film experience at all before because I was more doing theatre work that like I was with London Youth Committee and other theatre groups outside my school. So you'd never done anything on camera before? No, not filming. Only like when I'm doing a monologue at a theatre, like someone would film it. Not actual film. So, so this, so this is your first sort of on on screen role, yeah. like whether it's TV or film. Yeah. For Simon Howard, John Boyega. First on screen role. What had you been doing Second before job. before we found you? Um, I was at the Chatical doing. Uh, play part of the non-black or white season at the track which you came to see yeah so, yeah yeah i came to see john Boyega in a production called what was the play category called? b category b yeah, yeah. about life mm -hmm. in prisons and you had a small part john didn't you you had yeah, you were yeah. on stage for about 10 minutes 10 minutes went backstage at kebab <laughs> same thing next day <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. and, and before you'd what done that play how much training had you had quite a lot of training but um since you were a little kid Mm, yeah, you say that, but it's youth group, then from youth group to professional training, and then from there to this. But yeah. it's all still a new experience. Yeah, Alex? Um, I had absolutely no training whatsoever. I mean, I did, you know, um, drama college and school and stuff, but I'd never acted in theatre or on screen at all. And Leon Jones? Yeah, um, same as my first job as well. Um, I haven't had any on screen. Before. Any training, any theatre um, groups, lessons and stuff? No, just studying drama really at school and that, um, college, that was about it. And f friends? Yeah, I've had quite a bit actually of um, TV and a tiny bit of film as well. In mm. fact, out of everybody here, friends, you 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 probably had the most on yeah, camera yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, I've had quite a bit. I mean, yeah. before my job before, this was on um, Hereafter with Clint Eastwood and stuff, which was quite amazing to do. Disney stuff, BBC stuff, the kind of yeah, all the kind of usual kind of run of the mill actory stuff like and stuff like that. So, so let's yeah. talk about what's what's going on, on on screen at the moment. Obviously, the 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 gang in the film <laughs> have just been attacked by the little alien, and we and they've just beaten it up in the playground hut. Let's talk about the 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 beginning of the film and the fact that we meet this gang as kind of scary almost stereotyped muggers. What did you think about the script when you read it in terms of the way it presents young people, young people from London and, and gangs? Were you, when you read the script, were any of you like put off by this opening scene? Did, did you think this was gonna be another sort of stereotyped um, film? Um, no, I, I weren't put off because the stereotype films is usually like kids versus kids you're in that area, I'm in this area, let's have a war. But I knew it wasn't really kind of like that because sci-fi is involved, like aliens are coming to South London, so. Mm. So it's not, so it immediately says that it's not about the gang thing kind of thing. Yeah, like, but, yeah, it does say that because it's not like we're not fighting other gangs, we're not pulling guns out on other gangs, nothing like that. So, What's your feeling about the way that people of your age are portrayed in films and television generally? Stereotypes, isn't it? What sort of same thing? Same old, same old negative stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm. This, this, this boy was different for me. I did start off thinking it was very stereotypical, to be honest. But what what done it for me was the journey, was the fact that um, during the film, the characters got stripped of all this kind of. I don't care attitude and then you come to realize that they're just cool kids they're just kids you know and I think you know young kids are just stereotyped there are some kids who are doing good but who are just in places like this and just are the product of their their communities do you know what I mean and do you put do you find yourselves like Franz as a young actor do you find yourselves being be auditioning and being asked to do very similar things mm. a lot mm. I mean in um in UK at the moment, especially for for young young black actors as well, there's not too many diverse roles out there at the moment. I mean, it's always drug dealer this, kind of gang this, <laughs> shoot this, stab that. But I don't know. This is this is different because it's not 
It's about the gang and that. It's it's more than that, and it kind of shows the the kind of reality of this whole kind of um, area, even though it's got this whole alien twist to it, which I liked. So. What are your memories of, of filming this section? I mean, this was the, the we, we shot this film pretty much chronologically, so we went through the story yeah. in mm. story order. Mm -hmm. And we started, we, we were shooting here around the Haygate in South London, and we shot around Myatt's Fields in Brixton. Um, and it was freezing cold, says oh, he, having boy. said we weren't going to talk Ooh. about the weather. It was like <laughs> sub zero. Didn't it, Alex nearly like. Yeah, I pulled out He nearly died. Five in the first week, not good. <laughs> so, 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 talk a bit about what this was like, because this would have been in at the deep end for you guys. Your first mm -hmm. feature film. How did it feel when you came on the set for the first day and saw the scale of the production? Can you just can you describe that at all, Leon? For instance. Um, yeah, when the first time we saw it, like it was a shock kind of, because like, this is, as you said, this is my first time seeing it as well, like. The, um, like all the equipment, everyone around you, the crew. Was, How many people are around you? I mean, can you describe the like, scene oh when you first gosh. walked, like, first you, walked you walk onto the on set? And there's literally people everywhere just walking around. Like everyone's doing their job, really. Yeah. yeah. But you have to do everyone's your job got their well. own job. Mm. To do. And how did you feel? Were you nervous or intimidated or, um, or confident or no, how, how did you how did you feel? I wasn't I wasn't nervous at first. I, I would say I was confident because like I was looking forward to do it, mm. to doing it. Like. It felt good, it felt good, it felt good. I got used to it after and then it felt natural. Simon, how did you feel? Because this, this would have been your your first time walking onto any kind of film or television set. Yeah, um, I was nervous at first, you know, because it's like, I wasn't nervous with like the lights and everything because I'm used to that from theatre and everything. But what made me nervous is that I wasn't actually really used to an actual film set. That I didn't really know what was really going on around me too tough. Mm. But like one week, two weeks into it, you start knowing everyone's role then. And did the did the rehearsal help? Because John to go we had a little bit of rehearsal, didn't we, before we actually yeah. started filming. Mm -hmm. Can you tell people about that? Yeah, it was fun. Got a chance to kind of like um tweak the script, got a chance to get into our characters and like do improvisation, Bond. put mm. put the scenes. Bonding was important, mm. right? Because yeah. Yeah, uh, we, had to, we, we had to make had you look like friends yeah, and a guy like, who'd known each other. Yeah, yeah, we had to look like we'd known each other for years and stuff. So mm. I think that whole rehearsal period and that uh, that just made us kind of actually get to know each other properly. Because I mean, we're spending like the whole day together, mm. like so. Yeah. And even sometimes after rehearsals, as yeah, well, after some rehearsals of us stick together. And it was it was pretty intense work, wasn't it? Like we were we were shooting six day weeks, all night yeah, man. in the yeah. freezing cold. Was, was, was there any point at which you thought, you know, fuck this, this isn't <laughs> this isn't as fun as I thought it would be? Alex, was there any any point like, like you got you got really super cold? <laughs> and and hella cold, man. Yeah, yeah, you got cold, cold man. Yeah. Hella cold, dude. There wasn't one point where in my mind I wanted to leave. Not once. Mm. Eskimo. Anybody Not else? Once. Did anybody else have second thoughts? Think this is too much like hard work? Ah oh, man. Do you know, man. Do you know? <laughs> no. But there was only. I think there was only one. <laughs> one scene where I was like, I fuck. I'm, <clears throat> I was like, here, yeah, forget this. I, I'm gonna go home in a minute. That was when I was like. like what what, what really, scene was that, Franz? There was a scene where like there was like blood shooting up into my eyes and my nose <laughs> and my mouth. My neck was in some crooked position. I was just like, do you know what? Do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. was this scene? Hmm? Why was this very oh, yeah, scene? This scene was sleep. Remember we were like doing the, it? the set, like the, the, the dust. It made you really like yeah, like <coughs> and depressed. <laughs> so let's let, let's talk about here. Here you appear to be smoking jazz cigarettes, which is very dangerous and irresponsible. Um, but what what's actually being smoked here? Oh weed. Oh yeah, god. Oh, <laughs> marijuana. It was just uh, uh, some oh, cheese. Let's, 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 let's let Alex, because Alex what, had to smoke was, a lot of it. I was one of the first people that tasted it and Franz tasted it straight after. It was this herbal... I don't even know how to describe it as what it was. Honey roast. It was right? like... Honey roast, yeah, yeah, that yeah. honey roast... Shh, Crap! It's and it like you tasted visit like Holland fish barracks guts. Or it was terrible. I thought it was alright. We first tasted it on rehearsals, yeah. Friends. Oh man. Oh, I man. nearly puked. He nearly puked. 
So Tim nearly puked. So it's nasty herbal tobacco stuff. Yeah, yeah, but you kind of you kind of get used to it after you know nah, after man. a while. And now only, nah, <laughs> only it's worth pointing out here that only particular members of the gang are actually it's indulging in this yeah. stuff. Yeah. So so Moses is not indulging in this nope. stuff. No, Who no. else isn't? Leo, um, Leo um, no. your Jerome. character, Jerome isn't yeah, he's not indulging either. in it. And we're making, we're making bigs. Yeah, we kind yeah, of... Yeah, oh, yeah. So you're Dennis forcing him to try it. No, forcing him to try it. You kind of smoke here. Whereas pe Pesticles, as, the, as we I'm like to call him, he is the he is the linchpin of the naughty smoking activity. Now let's talk about um, Nick Frost. <laughs> so, so Nick Frost, what was it like meeting him and working with him? Let's ask John Boyega. It was cool. It was brilliant. Did you know his work before you did this? Yeah, watched Shaun of the Dead, mm. watched Pop Fuzz, and to see him right in front of me, eating biscuits <laughs> and filming a scene, I was just like, oh my gosh! But then I just got down. Do work. Yeah. He's a cool guy. We love Nick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick loves us. <laughs> yeah. He can be quite sort of um distracting and cheeky on set. Can't yes. He? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Acting. <laughs> so, no, no, hang on a second, hang on a second. What are you saying there, John? What did he used to do? Before before uh, when the cameras were rolling before we started seeing, he would just shout out something like acting or Moses don't bum me or something like that. <laughs> And it was just like, everyone just start cracking up. I don't know why he does it, but you know, it must help him in some way. Mm. One, one that was good is, um, we were standing there just before this scene in, um, in the weed room when we were outside. And um, me and him are standing there talking. I can't remember what it was amazingly about, but um, we came up with the idea about Ron's mum, that she was too fat to leave her bed. She was bald. <laughs> <laughs> one instead of having you know a normal set of tits, she had one big tit in the middle of her chest. <laughs> that conversation, that was and, uh, yeah, that's and that, like um, she'd asked like um, Nick's character Ron to rub her feet. Mm, I can imagine Clean this up. might might have got quite yeah, obscene. It went, it yeah, went yeah, quite yeah. Far. Let's, let's not go there for but, the sake I mean, of three. It was just it was just hilarious, you know. I think everybody connected with them. A different connected with him at a different point. Now let's mm. talk about um, obviously there's the brilliant Jermaine Hunter here playing hi hats, but mm. just to briefly talk about Salom there, who is another guy I think who, who'd had not a lot of acting experience no. before oh. he did this part, and he's brilliant as oh, Tonks, don't you think, Salom? Oh, Salom is just he's hilarious. Tell us man. about Salom, friends. He just did the most funny, the funniest down to earth. Yeah, yeah. Really. just chilled he out. He just like. Like a big teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just so he just so lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's another yeah. weird thing about shooting in this room was we had all this ultraviolet light, which comes into play later to reveal the aliens' pheromone. But it meant we had to protect our eyes all the time, didn't it? And yeah. um, also our skin because you can get sunburned, and it can damage your eyeballs. Could right? You Some guy said I look like Blade. How do, how do you mean? That feels like a non sequitur. <laughs> oh, in your in your in sunglasses, shades, yeah, in your yeah. wraparound shades. <laughs> yeah. But it was one of the spaces that was quite oppressive to work in because it was so narrow. It was full of all those weed plants. Mm. And worst hot. of all, they were fake, and it was boiling hot. <laughs> <and> it was <laughs> full, of that, full of that weird smoke. Wasn't that mo moth? Um, the documentary voice. Um, That's Adam, Adam Buxton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adam. from the Watson oh. Joe Show, which is your so. favourite radio show, right? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I remember you guys all talking a lot about your characters when we weren't shooting mm. and thinking about what yeah. their families were like, what their yeah. backgrounds were like, yeah. what they'd done before yeah. this all happened and what they would do after and stuff. Mm. Can we talk about that a bit? Like, like John, is there stuff that you figured out about Moses that isn't necessarily in the film and on the screen? Uh, I figured in terms of his status in, in the end, he was like in the end he's kind of like, He's 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 big on the ends. He's a he's a big boy. Everybody knows him. Everybody respects him. Kind of thing. Um, I think obviously with him not living with his parents, he's done a lot of bad stuff in school. At this point, I'm probably meeting where he's like kicked out, doesn't really go to school. Like we see Jerome in his school uniform underneath his hoodie. Yeah, Moses that's a good know. observation. That Jerome's the only character who's still got his uniform mm -hmm. under his yeah. hoodie. So yeah, there's lots yeah. of little clues about the characters yeah. there, aren't they? If, if, if yeah. you want to look, if Biggs you want to look closely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how do we know Biggs is bunking? He's 
<laughs> it's just, it's just, just he, 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 got, he got sucked in by Dennis or Pest or yeah. someone. And 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 John, a lot of what you're saying is is sort of spins out of the fact that we see Moses um, being recruited by hi hats there and yep. and given some cocaine and stuff to deal. So that means that he's already reached a certain place in the hierarchy in the block. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a line from from hi hat that says, "You still you still shot my food from Ron still like." Obviously, he's he's done things. He's done stuff. So that means Moses has been low level yeah, yeah, weed yeah, dealing he's been in low yeah. level area. Yeah. Not really sure about it though. He's not really sure about it. So, what are yeah. you giggling at, friend? Friend oh, P? It's the, way, it's the way that um, what's it? <laughs> Jerome just pulls out this massive machete just from nowhere. <laughs> like, so we had a we 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 couldn't figure out where he would hide that machete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember we had to shoot that yeah. really quickly? And and I think in the script it was under the under mattress. Under the mattress at first, or behind his bed or something. Like that but first. you know, a lot of this stuff mm. came from real interviews I did with kids mm -hmm. in youth groups around South London, and I taught them through the story, and I would ask them how they would defend themselves under these circumstances, and I said. If you, if, if you needed to defend yourself, what weapon would you get in your house? And really, Shame. aliens or no <laughs> aliens, just, you know. most people have a little plan in their head for what they would do yeah. if there was an intruder mm. in their mm. house. So this isn't really saying this sequence that all kids on estates have weapons. Have weapons yeah. Yeah. It's saying that all human beings have, the, have a little place yeah, in yeah. their mind yeah, where they have an emergency it's plan. It's mm. human nature, you know. You yeah. always there's always so suspicions. I know if there was an alien that came to my house, I'm throwing my cat first and running. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> and just saying. so, so obviously here we're doing a thing where we see every member of the gang go into their flats, but we don't go into the flat with Moses, Moses yeah. to try try and create a little bit of mystery of of what behind his door. Did we did we ever figure out what he was doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he doesn't bring a weapon, weapon back. <laughs> well, this is very true. We tried to figure out uh, what, why Moses was going into his flat, and there is an answer to that. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> probably true. <laughs> so think of any John's not doing that. Are you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's no. not a very, very heroic thing to do. I think there's a scene where he's on his balcony, just, just looking out, <laughs> into the, into the, just saying, "This is my night. Gotta go defend the block." And then he comes out. But obviously, you didn't have the right money to like put that scene in the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know. So here we go back outside, and now obviously the first, uh, or the second wave of meteors has come down, and this was another very cold night. This was a funny yeah. night. Yeah. It was a funny night. Why was yeah, it funny? Yeah, there was, oh, there was so few, many, there were so drops, many mishaps that was mishaps. happening, mm -hmm. especially when it came to modes of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I broke, I nearly broke John's leg with the with a pen. Yeah. Alex dropped off the tiny, no, hold on, hold on, tiny, tiny bike. bike. <laughs> you know, the way it happened, man, I was, oh. I was, I was trying to pedal really fast, and my left foot slipped off the pedal, went under the bike, and the whole bike flipped, Just and I landed flipped. on my bike. Oh, yeah. I did a wheelie on the, on the ped and dropped. Oh, it was a, it was a lot that happened. Lesson, boy. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we first see a glimpse of the big second wave of aliens. Yeah. And the guy who helped perform the aliens was this guy called Terry Notary. Who can t who can t tell us about Terry? Lee? Hey, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm Terry. Yeah, basically, that's Terry. Lovely he's guy. coming to sit like he, he's so. Like, hang on, describe. Remember, people uh, at home won't have any oh, yeah, idea um, of who this person is. So start basic. Who who was Terry? Um, he was the cut and the guy in the alien suit, right? It's an American guy. American, yeah. And he done he done a lot of work. He does like all the um. The animation is it? Anim no, is no, it no, no. like motion capture. Motion, motion capture. capture for like he done the Hulk in it and yeah. Superman. Superman. He done Planet Silver Eight Surfer, Eight. Planet Eight. He done a lot of work actually. So he was quite a cool guy to have yeah, around definitely. the place. Yeah. He's actually he's very like he makes the room bright when he comes in. Like he'll yeah. come in, he's like. Hey guys, <laughs> and everyone's yeah. everything's just lights up really. He's, mm. like, he's a good guy. Man. And did it ever feel scary for real? Doing yeah. This yeah. Stuff? yeah, yeah, yeah. The was, worst thing, the worst <laughs> thing about Terry, man, is there'll be a scene like either when he's on top of friends or he's chasing me or he's chasing somebody. He'll be well, standing there sucking himself so out, and he's going, "Yeah, Alex, you're my bitch. I'm gonna catch you, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pin you down and rape you." Yeah. So uh, let's let's um let's talk about the the feds, the five o. Ooh. The police in the block here. What do you think about the way that this film represents the relationship between uh, the young people on the estate and the, and the police? Quite truthful. Uh, they don't like each other. Yeah. Clearly. 
And is that a true reflection of what it's like out there, do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And why has that situation arose? Why has a situation arose where uh, whole communities don't even trust the police? I mean, is it true to I say that in some of these communities, if something bad happens no, to you... No, you know, in some communities, when something bad does happen, the whole community goes to the police. Yeah. And there's some communities when something bad happens, even people's mums, dads wouldn't even want to get police involved. And what's the difference between those things? What's the difference? Why, why would you in one circumstance go to the police and in another circumstance not? I think come? it's more... Some people think, are they actually gonna... Do anything. Do anything about it, or should I go do something Trust. about it myself? Mm. Really? Because there's a thing you guys brought to the script. In, 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 in the draft that I had before I cast you, the kids were a bit softer on Sam. Because obviously Jodie Whittaker's character, Sam, reports the kids to the police. Mm. And we sort of went a bit stronger on the idea that she was a snitch. Mm. Yeah. Didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Because, be, yeah. because talking to you guys, you felt that that would have been a stronger thing from yeah. the gang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking to the police is a big no-no. So yeah. yeah, so that's suggesting that even like by definition, uh, reporting somebody to the police is like the worst thing you can do. Is that true? I would say because there's a contradiction here, isn't there? Yeah. Like, there is I a think, contradiction. I think it's it a silly on mentality. The yeah. of what it's 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 a, it's a, it's a, an, an element of it is a silly mentality. Another element has like a, a truthful sense to it. But you know, I don't know. It's it's, it's opinion. It's opinion. It all goes down to just opinions yeah. of what you think of the police and whether you think telling the police will help the situation and all that stuff. But I personally think that we were thinking about the characters when we brought that to the scripts. Like Moses, obviously, he knows what he's been through and he knows why he robbed her. So whatever he does is the truth to him and is right to him because of his situation. Yeah. So robbing Sam is like, you know, I had to rob you. This is I had, I need the money, whatever. But why are you going to tell the police though? <laughs> don't, don't tell the police, like, don't tell the police. They don't know what I've been through, do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's weird, it's weird. And so how about this? This is where the sequence becomes a little more fantastical, using fireworks <laughs> to get out of the... Um, Great shot. To get Moses out of the uh, police van there. Um, it is one of my favourite bits. Yeah. Mm. Now, Alex Esmail, you actually threw that, uh, that <laughs> firework, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you got it under that van in one shot, didn't you? Actually, it took me three tries. Did it? On the third try, I got it right on the... Bloody hell. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought it was one. On the first two. try, it was too short and it kind of rolled and stopped. On the second three try, right. I hit the van. And on the third try, it rolled under. Surely there's like a category in Oscars for that. <laughs> <laughs> were, you guys di were you guys disappointed at all that when you shoot action, you have to break it down into these tiny little pieces? Did you know that before we uh, went into this? I didn't uh, actually know that, you know. Yeah. I thought it's actually the full on everything. Yeah. Like it's not really, you but thought that we'd stage the whole sequence and then sort of shoot it with lots of cameras. Yeah, or, something. or like, yeah. you know, if it's like a showdown, like a face down, I thought it would actually be full on. Not. Yeah. Long, but have you. Ha, did, ha, has making this film made you watch movies in a different way? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Go every on, day. Day. Tell, tell us. Tell yeah, us. Every every, day. I, watched, I watched a film that I've watched before, like, before I did the film, and I just realised, like, oh, there's a cameraman right there, there's people, I can, there's people behind him just walking about, and like, yeah. you look at it so different. Most and horror like, films look, um, look at it from more what, what, Hang on, what yeah. is it about horror films, sorry? Like, you just know, like, <laughs> before I, I knew, I always knew it was fake, mm. but, like, you always got that feeling that. Like, Mm. Right, that, that looked real that time. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like it's up to the point where you just know like what like what's he doing like? Mm. His head ain't falling off, like yeah. what's he doing? Stunt like, doubles as well. Does yeah, it give like, you yeah, more yeah, respect yeah, yeah. You know for actors? Do, do, does it give you more respect for actors and, and directors? Because uh, as somebody who's directed their first film, before I directed a film I used to be quite um casual about being opinionated and slagging things off and bitching about stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, now that yeah. I've made a film, I've got a lot kind of more respect and I'm going to do that less mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now I know how hard work it is. I mean, it, it is hard work, wouldn't you say? It's like it's like nature's against you. Definitely. It's like yeah. the world doesn't Every, want you yeah, to, yeah. To, to go in a... Time especially yeah. as well. What is it? It's time. It's time like it's like feeling you. tired. Yeah. The weather. The, the weather. It's like little things, things being everywhere. really annoying. All gathering yeah. up and then it's just a big problem. Yeah. What, yeah. I, uh, what I really have respect for is actors in films where 
you know, something's completely CGI so they're acting with nothing. Mm. I think, you know, that must be quite hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I have real respect for those people. Since I've done this, I realise how hard it must be. To, to, to act to an empty space. Yeah, to just like a green screen or something. It must be extremely hard. Because we were lucky to have the actual creatures in front of us, weren't yeah. we? Do you think yeah. that made yeah. a difference? Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're actually scary. Like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially people yeah. inside. They're actually are these big black things in, in front of your face. And it's quite... It does bring a scare factor to it. Yeah, it does. Just standing in front of it, it's like whoa. Uh, and it's like you are running from yeah, something. You are running yeah. he's actually <laughs> you stop, running. you are getting hit or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You might as well just run. <laughs> were there were there moments in filming where you for? I mean, presumably you're all really good actors, so maybe that you were like this all the time. But were there moments when you felt you were totally in the film? When you completely yeah. forgot about the crew around you? Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of times moment? there was one day. I mean, there was one day. I think it was. And I think the scene before, when me and John, we <laughs> went into character and literally, we literally like disappeared for about 10 minutes and just like was wandering like around the Hague. Oh, yeah, so stage. this was off camera? Yeah, yep. this was off camera and we were just wandering around like as Moses and Dennis, mm. just talking to each other. And um, yeah, we kind of got in trouble for that. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we kind of, like, there were certain points where we'd be, like, saying something and be like, hold on, that's, that's, like, a Dennis thing to say. That's a, that's a Pest thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And how about Jodie Whittaker's character, Sam, here? But we were talking about this a, a little bit earlier. But do you think the film portrays, a, like, a realistic... Uh, progression of their relationship. Do you think this gang, in reality, would warm to her? Uh, yeah, I think it depends, really. But knowing on the circumstances, I think there's not much. Really yeah, there. I think I think you have to be very careful not to be too political with this film because, at the end of the day, the sci-fi does shine through. Mm. Yeah, throughout a lot of it. Do you know what I mean? So, so it becomes kind of exaggerated yeah, and, yeah, and larger yeah. than life. Mm-hmm. I just remember, I remember Franz and, and John, you having an interesting conversation about that. We gave you little flip cams, didn't we, to shoot <laughs> yourselves. And, and one afternoon you left it on. And I think you were aware that it was on, but yeah. you had a conversation about Sam and about Dennis, out of all these characters, really not liking her. Yeah. He's, he, he's the one that, that, that will not forgive her for I snitching. Nah. That's the only thing that I think I kind of methoded. One thing I tried not to really talk to, talk to Jodie too much. I feel a bit bad now. But, <laughs> but yeah, I tried not to really chat to her too friendly kind of thing. Just so that I wouldn't, when I was in a scene with her, it would be clear that I really didn't actually like her yeah. at all. So I think it's because Dennis is kind of, he's really bad. He's into that whole badness. He likes it. I don't think where some of the other characters, I mean, Moses does it because this is kind of what he has to do just to like... To survive. To survive. Yeah. Whereas Dennis is kind of doing it because yeah. hey, this is fun. Like, he thinks he's, he's, he's a bad boy. Yeah, he so wants to be a bad boy. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah. Mm. That's what I love about it. it, it Diff- it shows different different reason. Yeah. Biggs is there because he's a small little kid and he just, just under peer pressure. There, he so wants the fun. Moses is there because of his circumstance. Jerome doesn't even want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about what. How does Jer- <laughs> how does Jerome feel about the whole thing? I'm like, but he, yeah, he doesn't want to be in these situations. But like, he knows he knows like what they're doing is wrong. He knows that like, there's a, a career for him in the future. Like, what? Path. What? Why is Jerome there in the Cause, mugging like, in the first honestly, place? Because like, like, I was he grew up with these guys. Like these guys were around. He, this is where he lives as well. Yeah. And he grew up with these guys. Like they went to school with him. Some of them went to school with him as well. And like, there is boys. Like once once you have them boys, like you will. You will go with them no matter what, because mm. that's like their family basically. Because he's sort of st- he, he's doing his job in the mugging, but yeah. you can see that Jerome's a little more nervous and yeah. he's hanging at the back he's and not, he just like, wants yeah, to. He's leave. not. He's not really. I wouldn't say like a fighter. He's more like strategic and like a tactician. Like he would rather work stuff out than go mm. and get his hands dirty. Whereas like Dennis. And how does he feel about Sam? Do you think? Um, he. I don't think he really minds, you know, because like. How do you mean? That doesn't mind. Because like he would. He doesn't mind her mind there. Because. Like it, it's not really bothering him he, that he's there. I mean, she's there, sorry. But yeah, he, he doesn't really mind. He doesn't really care. Really, to be he quite likes her. 
Um, yeah, I think he finds that a bit interesting as well. <laughs> <laughs> and what about testicles? How does testicles feel about Sam? Um, I don't really think he cares that much because, you know, through part of the film, well, at this point he doesn't he's too really baked. care. Yeah, he's too high. But um, <laughs> I think once once he gets bitten and stuff, you know, he, he wants her to be there just for his own safety. Like, he doesn't care what happens to her, he just wants her to help him. So here comes our uh, biggest action sequence, I suppose, uh, yeah. the walkway chase. Oh, this was fun. This was, this so was fun. fun. Yeah. This was serious. It, it's fun. interesting how when you work on a film, because these things take so long to do, different parts of the film have different names, don't they? So we always refer to this as the walkway chase, like we refer to Moses' big run at the end as the hero yeah. run. Yeah, we can't talk about that now. That's talk about that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about filming this. I mean, we, we spent about... Uh, a week or ten days just on this sequence yeah, alone, yeah. right? I think it came yeah. out great. And it was thank you, Alex. And it was broken <laughs> down. It was broken down into loads of little chunks, wasn't it? So, uh, do we want to tell people which of these things are stunt men and which aren't, or should no, we leave it a mystery? No, no, we'll, let, we'll, we'll let people have a guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, Simon, sleep. what was it like performing this jump? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had well, my back a bit, but yeah. How many times did you do it? One take, man. One take. <laughs> One Very take. good. Straight. And, and uh, what was it like, John, driving down these stairs on that um, motocross bike? Uncomfortable. My balls weren't happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, can we... Can that we, was no, a we stunt double. Totally <laughs> <laughs> that won't be. Now, Franz, are there moments when you got frustrated that your character's a bit of a klutz? Um, like, he's trying to be super cool, but he keeps um, I, I falling over. Quite, I found it quite funny, because he's trying so hard. He's not trying so hard, to do, but... And well, here's a good moment with Pesca. <laughs> Ouch. That was fun. Yeah, and that spark wasn't even meant to happen. That just happened, like, just naturally. Was that d -neg? Nah, it just happened. Seriously? I tell yeah. you who that was. That was Acer from Technicolor who graded the film. He very kindly spent an extra couple of hours painstakingly animating some little sparks to come out of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> giving them one, <laughs> giving them one oh, little morsel oh, of truth amongst the painful. lies. Um, so, Simon, this is when your character Ooh, ends up jumping in the bin. So that had quite a lot of repercussions, didn't it? It meant that you were separated from the rest of the cast. Yeah. Talk about that for a bit. Were you happy about that or were you upset about that? Um. Because you'd formed a quite a tight knit friendship at this point. Yeah, we were about and four Julie or five that. weeks into the shoot. Yeah. And then suddenly into the bin you go, and you're um, separated from everybody I think else. When you look at it, like a couple people died, so it's really. I'm grateful that I was in the bin. <laughs> but, no, that's real. That's but, real. you know, like, a man gotta do what a man gotta do. <laughs> like, I was getting chased by aliens. Plus, Biggs becomes a very useful kind of communication that's centre down there yeah, in the definitely. bin, doesn't he? Like, Biggs, the only guy who's got any credit in that it's like bin. BT. But I reckon he, he don't know a lot of stuff, though, man. He's, yeah, yeah. He's missed so much. He's like, ignorant of a lot of what's happened. Yeah, yeah. man. So now we go into the interiors, and basically the whole first third of the film is all exterior. Almost the first half of it is all exterior. And that was our first five weeks of shooting. And then we went into the studio in three mils uh, and shot in these brilliant corridor sets that were built by Marcus Rowland. And I don't know about you, but weirdly I preferred working on location at night than I did the yeah, studio yeah. it felt so like it felt well. like playtime at yeah. night yeah. 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 and when yeah. we got into real. the studio yeah. it felt yeah. like a work like nine to five I think yeah. Yeah. Hey yeah, was the best when we was on the actual yeah. 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 definitely yeah. That, that was the best time best time but then I, mean, I did enjoy the studio stuff though yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. warmer yeah. isn't it it was warmer yeah. it was more comfortable yeah. it was easier to get food and it was a kind of tiny bit more relaxed but we still had a a, an enormous amount to do, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we did. Yeah. Were you surprised at how fast you have to do stuff? I, as a director, I was surprised at how how little time you have to do things. When I watch films, I always think that they've had ages to think about everything. Mm -hmm. But but often you just have to get the shot done really really fast. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you do. Yeah. I feel it's, it's. I think it's. But I think it's longer than TV. I think yeah. TV. You like crack out yeah. loads of pages like in a day whereas you can be working on maybe I mean like like this was how long, how long did we film this this, this was like, like half this a day went on for a while this scene went on for a little bit I think was on this scene here yeah. was a like over a day 
Well, well, these scenes are complicated because there's mm. so many people in the room, yeah. mm. and then every different eye line has to be represented by different camera positions. Yeah. So yeah. What, what took a lot of time here was just getting all the angles we needed. But then the challenge for you guys was to keep the energy up mm. and the enthusiasm up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, which was sometimes quite hard when you were tired and stuff like that. I think and, I think for me it was like, um, why are we talking for? Like, do you know what I mean? It's filmed by aliens, so much talking, like, because you know what's to come. You know that there's going to be a chase, you know that there's going to be <laughs> this, you did, and that. So you're just like, okay, can we just like get this done? It's not a talky this? film, though, is it? In no, fact, it's when, not I, at all. when I worked on the script before I'd even met you guys, the note I would get a lot was, oh, it should stop more. There should be more scenes where people stop and talk about things. Mm. But I didn't want that. I that just wanted to keep it pushing down, forward. Yeah. Yeah. Should have been a silent yeah. film. <laughs> you know that what made it yeah. very cinematic. Yeah, so we're back here with uh, Bruis and uh, Ron. Let's talk about Bruis's character. Do you guys know anybody like Bruis in the real world? Pesticles, go on me. Yeah, um, Joe Cornish. You, Joe. Completely, you know. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, you've said it, you've said it yourself on many occasions. Bit stupid. That you are quite like Bruis. I used to be. It's, he's certainly based on me when I was in my 20s and I used to go and uh, score jazz herbs in various... Um, oh, oh, tower gosh. blocks in Wandsworth. I did, but I'd find myself in these weird situations where um, the jazz specialist would go off to, you know, get some stuff from somewhere else and I'd be al sitting alone in his flat. And my mind used to like fantasize about what might happen, you know, if a rival dealer came round, <laughs> or, or the police smashed in the door and raided the flat. So that was where all this comes from, really. What do you think about uh, the character of, of Bruis? He's hilarious. Oh, waste man. Great character. <laughs> do you think there are people like this out there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Of course. Definitely. He's got a good look to him as well. Like. He has, yeah. hasn't he? His and and um, we should talk about costume a bit, because Luke mm. came up with that costume himself. He says, yeah. look, yeah. I want to put this together myself. And I really amazing. Uh, and I thought, when he came up with it, I thought, this nice is weird. Look. He looks like a sort of funky farmer. Yeah. <laughs> but and, it works. And, and, then, it and, then, works. and then as I walk the streets of London, you even saw, now, you see people yeah, dressed exact, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly like, like that. that. Like the boots and all that. And yeah, the, yeah, the, the boots and the jacket. The, the oh, yeah, I know the exactly a man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly a man. You really got it spot on. Yeah, and and you work. guys help with your costumes as well. Can we yeah. talk about that a bit? Like, um, like, yeah. like uh, the costume designer was a very brilliant uh, lady yeah, called yeah. Rosa Diaz. Rosa. Uh, and she's an absolute genius, and she brought so much brightness and poppiness and colourfulness. She's fabulous. She's really amazing. <laughs> but with enormous respect to her, and just like me and everybody, all of the other kind of um, older people on the crew, we didn't really know the symbolism and the significance of various colours. Mm. Right, and I guess people of my generation remember this kind of thing from LA gangs in the 90s. I've seen you around there before, you know. You lived there long. A couple of months. Hmm. Nice place. You so, what mistakes Thanks. do you think we nearly made with the costumes? The brim of the hats. Mm. The brim of the hats? Yeah. So, we bought you some hat brims that were kind of bent. Mm. Like duck a duck cats. beak, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the ba that's bad, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's yeah. not, it's not. It's not bad. Doesn't have the South London energy to it. Mm. Doesn't have the South London swag. So you got to have your hat it's brim completely straight. Straight, straight yeah. yeah. Like Era hats, caps, new Era hats. Caps. Fitted, yeah, fitted. Yeah. 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 And what about what about shoes? Oh, oh God! Do you know what? Maybe. I don't know the shoes. I think the shoes you can get away with a lot with mm. the shoes. To be honest, mm. but I think what was a big one was was the jeans and stuff, like yeah. the trousers. The trousers yeah. Because I remember yeah, the, the first, I think one of the first initial costumes I had was like really tight, like <laughs> suffocating, <laughs> like skinny jeans. And Oi. that's a kind of big no-no, like. So you wouldn't be seen dead no. wearing skin tight jeans? No, 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 no. And what, what about this thing where some of these characters have multiple pairs of trousers on? Can you explain what the deal with that is? <laughs> keep the weed. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep, keep your weed, your when your hands knives are cold and stuff. And cold, trust me. On the inside, so it's harder to find. If you've got to run away from police quickly, dash. Right, so the idea is that what, if you get patted down, mm. 
But does that really work? Like, you could presumably feel a weapon or a little bit of weed through a second pair of trousers? From 1999 to 2000, it just went dead. It don't work. Oh, that, so that's that, just like a... Really? It's just like a thing thing now. I and it's to bash it low as well. Yeah, just low, but any... If you want to, like, rock it low without, like... Your boxers being... Your ass cheeks and... coming out. Okay. <laughs> but what about, can't you just have your boxer shorts on? What the hell? Yeah. That's no, but then then you'll be seeing backs and legs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it depends how low you want it, because like, there's certain people that like to put it very low. Yeah. Right. Mm. And if you're just wearing your boxers, then you're going to see skin, and that's <laughs> not attractive. <laughs> and what, about, um, what about the bandanas? Um, Hide your face. But the bandanas, different territories around London have different coloured think, bandanas, I think, right? I think my bandana was the only one that was kind of territory-based. Mm. Just because I think the black bandana represents South London, I think. I think it does. I think there's different areas in Brixton, different areas in Peckham, all it's around that have that kind of colour. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we wanted to be careful that we weren't pretending to be something that we weren't, yeah, right? Exactly. That, that we weren't trying to, trying to say that we were any particular. We were trying to keep it, because we want the film to be accessible, really. Mm -hmm. And I think the film's message is kind of against that sort of territoriality in a way, don't you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. But one of the things the creatures are, are incredibly territorial in a kind of unthinking, animalistic, like negative way. And one of the journeys I think Moses goes on and the gang go, goes on are, are, are to realise how kind of stupid that is in some ways. Mm. So we were sort of trying to keep it non-partisan with the um, with the bandanas, wouldn't yeah, you, you say? You didn't want to make a purple or a red, something that stood out, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And they, the, the characters, they don't, they, don't, um, they don't wear it for long, so yeah, just trying to get a feel. A man isn't necessarily a bandana anyway. It's yeah. like a napkin, isn't it? <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah. like, yeah. it's yeah. off someone's head to or something. And and I'm just running, I've got my mm. mum's Headscarf, <laughs> headscarf that she puts on when she comes out of the bath or something. I've just wore it That's to cover right. my face. That's right. We talked about that, didn't we? It's yeah. something he's just grabbed mm. because uh, be anything, he knows really. what they're gonna do. I think the costumes are a good mix between hood and sci-fi as well, because like you can see that they kind of start turning into kind of like superhero superhero-y kind of costume sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like big sort of hood, really mm. done tight. The colours and the kind of shininess well. of my jacket in it and. And Moses, his hat kind of like his kind of superhero helmet and stuff. So, yeah. I always thought of the characters a bit like action figures. Yes. Yeah. Because they've all got their own look. They've mm. all got their own Fuckers. little vehicle. Yeah. They've all got their particular little <laughs> weapon they use to defend themselves. I always <laughs> fantasised there might be a line of Attack the Block action figures with little plastic accessories. Well, that's a mango. <laughs> I think one of the things that we were choosing like, picking the costume That'd was Moses' cool. jacket. And which we did, we found it really hard to get. We went like through three or four jackets to get the right yeah, kind yeah. of feel for it. it. Yeah, I wanted it to be like cinematic yeah. at the same time. And what was it you liked about the one that we eventually chose? It's, it just looks as if he's like a soldier. Like he, it's a little know. bit Che Guevara, isn't it? Yeah, like a yeah, freedom fighter. Cool. Yeah, it has that kind of oomph to it. Yeah, Citizen which is Smith. Cool. Yeah. You won't remember who Citizen Smith is, but he was a freedom fighter of a kind. <laughs> um, this is a different story. So let's talk about the estate here. So the estate you're looking at in these wide shots does not exist, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of my ambitions, really. I wanted people to go, oh, what was the estate? Where, Where is that block? Um, even though it's basically a composite of Islington, of somewhere near the Olympic site, and the Haygate in Elephant yeah. and Castle. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a combination. Really good, Alex, though. tell us, tell us how we did that. Then tell us where the well, different um, bits are. The uh, the bit where we're coming out on the bikes near the beginning, and we take a right. Well, it was our left, but it was our right. Yeah, we all come out on bikes and ride towards the. the so the main going. entrance and yeah, exit to the that block. bit was in uh, Islington. Um, then the actual door to the block that was um, <laughs> in Bow near the uh, That's Olympic right. Stadium. So, so, so the place where it says Wyndham House and where yeah. Pest runs mm. in and gets his yeah. leg bitten. And, then, and, um, and the main block itself was there as well, yeah. wasn't it? The actual then, tower block. And then the rest of all the walkways and all stuff like that's all part of the Haygate Estate. 
And the Haygate was a pretty amazing place to film, don't you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It was very nearly empty, wasn't it? Massive. Yeah, so much fun on that stage. And do any of you know the Haygate from before we made the film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have friends who have uh, you have friends who lived there and uh, used to hang out there before we filmed? But now it's just lived in the area. Cut off. Really? So that must have been quite cool for you, Simon, as somebody who knew that area. And John, you yeah. you live not too far yeah, away. Yeah. Not too far away from to, to now to then be back there filming. Mm, it's like because you've known it from when there were shops that was open there. Mm. From where like before my mum probably even had me, she was going there with my older brother. Yeah, yeah. there's like a bakery there, yeah, summer laundry, barbecues. everything. So what do you think about these places, these blocks and the architecture? Because like, I, I grew up not in a block, but I used to be slightly envious of people who lived there just because the architecture was a bit like a spaceship. And, it, and they seem like the most amazing places to have games when you're a kid. <laughs> is that uh, true? Yeah, it right is. Out. Like, yeah. when I, mean, I was little, we used to love playing, like, they'll get these big blocks, like, normally, like, Guinness. It was called, like, Guinness Block, like a block. That like, was you, the name of the building. You would just go up in it, and it's like, when you open the lift, you don't know what floor you're going to get caught on. Mm. So I used to just stay in the lift anyway. <laughs> right. Because no one really goes in there because they know it's like a dead end. Yeah. So. But That's what's the reality? I mean, are they... Because in some films, in a lot of films, tower blocks and estates are presented as these, these sort of symbols of, um, you know, urban decay kind of thing, aren't they? Mm. But we tried to do something different with this film, really, and and and, and make the uh, make the block into a sort of um, sci-fi playground kind of thing. Mm, what what do you think the reality the reality is? Is it a combination of both? Yeah, like when you when people when you were young as well, like and playing games like like runouts or something with your friends, like you used to run around the whole estate, like and the, you used to know the estate as well at like the back of your hand. Yeah. So you knew where everything was. You used to the hiding places. But like sometimes you could like play it on that the actual whole estate and like you can play it for hours, literally hours, yeah. hours on days. Like some on people will never get so, caught. Like. Yeah, you'll never get caught. She running around the whole place. It was really good. What's, what's, what's run, out? run out? Is run out a particular is, game? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. When, if you didn't play it, then you missed out. How do you, <laughs> how do you play? How do you play run out? Is um, it, there's two teams. There's two teams. Two Hang on, one at one at a time, Leon. There's two teams and like one team goes to hide and then. Or just they run off like basically go hide and the other team like will stay back for a while and then you have to find them. So it's like yeah. hide and seek um, yeah, with, with big base. numbers. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. Bikes and stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, you used to bike. Anything yeah, you, you want. Play, like, you anything to get away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> public transport. transport yeah. Yeah. You can get on a bus everything. to get away. Yeah. Was... I think one the, the way I used to play it was um, if there's a big group of us, one person will start as the catcher. And everyone's running and oh, when they catch each person they have to head. join the team. Oh. Yeah, basically like family, family head. So listen, let's let's get back to the to the film and this is uh this is one of our dialogue scenes coming up. And John Baega, let's talk about this scene that um this speech that Moses has here. Um this is kind of Moses' big speech. He's not a character that talks a lot. Mm. He kind of um doesn't say much, but when he does say stuff everybody kind of pays attention. But um, this is really, I think, the only part of the film where a character mentions colour without it being um, just a joke. Mm. And this, for me, came from one or two kids I'd met when I did research. Because when I did the research, I would ask people whether they believed in aliens. And most of the kids said no, but one or two of them actually believed, not in aliens, but in conspiracy theories. Yeah. And in the idea that the yeah. government and the state were actually conspiring against, you know, black kids, specifically some of them thought, or some of them thought it was specifically against working class kids who lived on estates. They, they actually thought that there was a conspiracy against them yeah. Yeah. to keep them out of work and to, and to hold them down. And that's what I was trying to get at here with Moses, because I was looking for places in the film where where I could find little bits of sci-fi mm. in a scenario that wasn't sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the places where people actually believed in quite far-fetched things. Um, what was that, was that, I mean, we talked about that before we shot this, right, John? Yeah, the way we did, we did, we did. How did that sit with you, that speech of Moses? I think it's, 
it's, it's just how he sees it, how he sees it, how he sees life from the experiences he's been through. It's just out friends. <laughs> from the experiences he's been through, it's just how he um, kind of views everything from what's happened to him. So I, I kind of, it was cool. It was written well. Do you know what I mean? The the speech we but tweaked it a little bit just to yeah. kind of stay true to to Moses to Moses' view of things and kind of like to have that contrast from the speech at the end of him taking responsibility and you can kind of like a phys- is it like a physical representation of how he changes throughout the film yeah I, it was always important to me because i wanted to balance the bad thing moses does at the beginning with a sense of how he's got to that place in his head where he feels that's an okay thing to do yeah but yeah. where he really feels the world is against him right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the world isn't doing him any favors, so he doesn't feel he should do the world any favors back. Really, it's a baby. It's a it's a baby mentality. Eh? At the end of the day, he needs to kind of step up and fix himself up. Yeah, do you know what I mean, start with himself. Start kind with of himself thing. first before you start talking yeah. about other people. So this was a quite a complicated scene to shoot, isn't it? I think it's one of the sequences we spent the most time filming because there's so many different elements, with the girls killing the creature in their bedroom. Moses getting his sword stuck in the wall, everybody else being too frightened to back him. And was that an issue was that an issue there in terms of your characters not going to back Moses and in terms of Moses not going to back Dennis? That was a big issue for me. That was a big yeah. issue. I think what Dennis done in terms of coming for Moses with the police van and doing that, I think that sat with Moses. That kind of shows that night proved who was his boys. Do you know what I mean? And the, to the, the, the fact well, that when we first shoot, when we first shoot it, I was like the back of the sofa, just like, was like squirming and just not not doing anything. And really and truly, I just wanted to get in there and just like knock a couple of heads out. So I think we did, we did reshoots where we had a shot where he just he gets thrown back by all the glass. He tries to get out, but um, a second alien just comes through, so he couldn't like physically couldn't go for him. So we I mean? we strengthened the idea that Moses was terrified by the fact that there are two aliens yeah, and yeah. so freaked out by what's happening in front of his eyes yeah, yeah. that he loses the moment loses, of courage yeah. to go and yeah. to go yeah. and help but that's important to me that you show that Moses despite having this kind of um, outward appearance of being a child yeah that the inside he's actually frightened and scared and yeah. vulnerable and and because this is the point in the movie now really where his actions come back to haunt him kind of thing, right? Boy. Yeah. yeah. And, and he realises that if he hadn't made the choices he made at the beginning of the film, he wouldn't have lost his friends. Mm. And Dennis hurt him the most, man. Dennis, Dennis is what made, like, what made him kind of like, want to be brave and want to, to fight him kind of thing. What, seeing Dennis die yeah, seeing and Dennis not being able to help Dennis? Being, yeah, yeah. I and think that's this when Dennis kind of saved him earlier. Yeah, Dennis like, saved him earlier, yeah. Risked his life to go into that smoke where there was two aliens. Yeah, yeah. Open the van and try to get him out of there. I think I think a lot of it is kind of like a like an outward thing, like kind of like showing off. Like when Dennis comes through, he goes, took your time, man. What Moses really meant was, thank God you mm. came. Nice to see you, man. I thought I was dead. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And now we're back in the bin with Biggs. Now Simon, tell us about shooting these scenes. Was it was it um, was it weird to be sat in that bin all on it, your own? Um it wasn't it was weird in the sense of not being on my own, but the sense of like trying to act in like a cramped environment. Like yeah. I'm going in a small hole that is a bin. And I have to, <laughs> small I have to like basically act lots of different emotions while I'm Quite. in a closed environment. Um, but um, um, and we work hard to get your levels of like um, distress and freaked outness up high, didn't we? Yeah, a lot of t- like before we done like before we shot nearly every scene of it, I was working on it. On and you emotions. were and you spent a lot of time in that bin having people smashing the outside of that bin with a huge <laughs> rubber hammer. <laughs> but hey, there was everything. I think there was um, <laughs> there was actually a bit where a big plank of wood or something <laughs> <laughs> went actual under the bin. Like a lever like to a, yeah, jerk a it up and down. or something. <laughs> it's just jerking the bin actually up and down a lot. And this scene is so cool. Ooh. Yeah. So here's Jermaine Hunter now. He's survived his little fight with the, with the creatures in the lift. 
<laughs> and this is when Brewis starts to realise uh, the full extent of the yeah. carnage in the block. Yeah. Go on, I was just going to say, one thing I love about Jermaine is the offset, you know, he's so, like, just normal, like, we'll just start mm. like, laughing, but then... On screen, he seems so twisted. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know what he I mean? Seems like someone you wouldn't want to talk to. And exactly. Have a combo with. But then, yeah. like, Offset, he's just hilarious, man. He's just such a nice guy. Why do you think he comes back to this block when he knows that there are these weird creatures in right. it? Right. With Bruce? Yeah. No, hi hats. He wants pride. Oh, it's his block. Pride. Pride. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. He Tell can't. Us. He can't. He can't be letting these little youngers yeah. thinking that they like ran him out of his own area and talking to yeah. him about all these aliens. He's so it's, it's for his reputation. Yeah, he needs yeah. to think that I'm the big man and keep up his whole image of I'm the boss of this block. Because sometimes you read about things that happen in the real world that are so outrageous. You know, people attacking each other in broad daylight or in the street or walking into a shop, and you think, man, how? Why would somebody do that? But it's the same kind of reason, isn't it? Mm. It's to show mm. that you are completely yeah. fearless. Mm. It's all part. Of, it's all in the mind. Yeah. He mind. doesn't want to show weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he thinks even he'll like, get if you even notice, like, even when um, the alien was coming towards him and he was still walking towards it to the point where it was like, oh, okay, now I got to run. Mm. But he was still fighting that urge to kind of stay. So Stay he's really, f he's kind of failed to learn the thing that Moses is now realizing. Yeah. So he goes on the journey that Moses would have gone on if Moses hadn't. He's, he's almost what Moses would become. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. I think he got, he got trapped in it. Like he got really trapped there. Whereas Moses was, he was going to get trapped, but yeah. this kind of saved him in a way. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about Probs and Mayhem, who uh, we just <laughs> saw, Sammy Williams and Michael Ajayo. Um, what would they like to work with, P Probs and Mayhem? Um, Simon, you had a scene with them in the bin. I don't, does anyone else? Yo, you, you, we all, you all had a little scene with them at yeah. the very beginning of the film and in the corridor. Yeah, let's talk actually, about them. That, um, you wouldn't think of that, that when you're outside and that, you wouldn't think someone of like their age would be intelligent but where I've actually <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, like, like, where I've actually chilled with them in the bin for more than <laughs> half an hour they actually they know a lot like I think rather right, like, they know what they're doing mm. like. I mean Sammy they're, they're both very uh, talented actors. Sammy, I think, had done a little more screen work than Michael. Yeah. But they were both had amazing like charisma and energy, don't you think? They were fun yeah. to be around, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you can see when you when we were off camera, like they were, they, like they were kind of mature in a way, like. That you could talk to them on levels as well. Yeah. Like. Except for the random moments. Hey, John! What? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> like, 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 who, was who was that? Michael. Michael. Michael, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael who plays uh, And if we were off stage, when he was up with, you got more. Yeah. yeah, I love that, man. <laughs> so the smoky corridor scene. So oh, scary, man. Um, we let's... walked into that, do you remember, John, and we couldn't see a thing? So let's talk about what we had to do for this. So we had this whole corridor set. <clears throat> And they basically built a loop, a huge loop. So they mm. built a huge plastic tunnel that linked one end of the corridor with another mm. so that we could fill the corridor with smoke. And then when we finished a take, they actually pushed pumped. the air, pumped the air in the corridor like a bicycle pump yeah. so, that the, so that the smoke moved mm. round right. to the opposite side of the circle kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Then they'd hold it in the yeah. plastic bag until we were ready to shoot and then they'd pump it back into the corridor. Mm. But, it, but it, it was genuinely impossible to see. It was very hard for the camera yeah. operator to see whether the shot was in focus or not. And we had to do this really quickly. Mm -hmm. And it was really frustrating for me because it was, you know, I was planning for it to be a really elaborate detailed sequence and, and we had something like half a day or two thirds of a day mm. to, do, to do your whole death, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how yeah. what was it? What was it like for you, Leon? Um. Yeah. As you said, the smoke code. Like literally, as you can see, it, you actually can't see like more than like <laughs> you can just about see your hand in front of your face. Like it's really you can't see. As you see, Jerome yeah. like ran into the wall because he couldn't see basically. Yeah. But um. Yeah. It was filming that was it was it was nuts. Like it's just weird filming when you film something and you know you're gonna die. Mm. Like, it's it's very strange. 
Really? Yeah. It is. It's not cool. <laughs> it's not why, fun. Why, why is that? So, I so don't know. You just get that feeling of like, oh, I'm going to die now. Like, and that's the end. It just feels kind of strange. Because it feels like the end of your work on the film or because, um, or because you care about your character yeah, or, or because it makes you think about your actual life and death. <laughs> no, 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 kind of not that far, not that far. <laughs> Oh, but it's, oh, it's, yeah, shit. did you see that? He grabbed my head. But um, <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah, it's 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 weird. Like your character's coming to an end, and it just feels like, oh yeah, man, no more. I wish yeah, I wish yeah. he didn't get into this situation as he even says himself and that. Mm. But yeah. it's it's weird, man. But it was a good scene. I loved it though. I was getting dragged back by some two guys, two big guys. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> he just pulled me back on the road. mat, and then I slid back. Yeah, and the blood come out. This bit, I wanted to go in. I wanted to go in and get him. Yeah, because that was emotional. I wanted to go in and get him. That was, that was like, nah, man. This is sick it, man. man. Nah, I'm sick of this. Yeah. But then, too. Because like, I didn't really deserve to die. Whereas Dennis, no, like, no, Dennis he didn't. Prick, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, a nice prick. Like, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So now we're coming back into Ron's, and this is the set that everybody found quite. I mean, there was a lot of smoke in this film, wasn't yeah. there? Mm. Oh, that was that was. I think, I think it was bad for mm. everybody's lungs. Yeah, I think everyone was going to get that made everyone feel a bit queasy. A bit queasy. Nick made me laugh at this bit, but he's just like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And then he just goes as well. Yeah. Goes back. <laughs> you know what? I really like all the smoke in the film, and it's something that me and Tom Townend, who shot the film, talked about a lot before we filmed it, because we remember it from the 80s and 70s when we were kids. And if you watch movies like Alien and Aliens, smoke. everyone's puffing like crazy. <laughs> They're having these big, you know, debates in the in the headquarters about whether to go back to the planet to try and capture the aliens, and Sigourney's puffing away on a fag. And uh, in old cop movies, everyone's puffing on fags, and every room is filled with this smoke, and so it does amazing things to the light. So, and in modern films, they're shot digitally, and smoking is against the law now. So uh, everything looks really clean and polished. Um, does that make any sense? I kind of miss the old school kind of atmosphere of it. I, oh, shit, man. That's got a Sorry, hug. Joe, but oh. it's yeah. weird, isn't it? Lots of people find that quite full on, but I just think oh. it's just pure fun. I love it. Wish I never chased after that thing. Which we never met you. But this is a movie with a lot of uh, naughty life. weed smoking, a lot of swearing, and a lot of violence, and some jumps. So let me ask you this what did your parent, parents, or guardians think of this script being. Because you were 16, 17 when you did this film. Well, did any of your parent, parents, or guardians like uh, raise any concerns about the, the, the what was in the script, friends? There was one actually when when um, I first got the script, and my mum had a little little butchers. Um, at the start, I remember there was there was a um, when we was robbing um, Sam, and there was they take her ring and something something, and there was this little direction that I wasn't really sure what it was about. I was like. But they want more. Then I was kind of like, huh? Like, yeah. what do they want more? But and my mum was like, okay. But it worked out all right. <laughs> well, she thought she thought yeah, they were implying was like, some kind whoa, of whoa. really yeah. horrible motive. Yeah, some yeah. Really but that was it. That was the only twisted. thing. There was no uh, no, no objection to anything. Other than that, else, she was like, yeah, I like it. Because <laughs> I was kind of worried that. Like, because at that point we really wanted you guys for the parts, and I was there was a little voice in my head worried that your parents might read the script and go, no, they're not doing it. Well, they're not agents, are they? Do you know what I mean? They're no, not. and I guess you were sixteen, so yeah, you yeah. can do what you want at that point. My mum my wasn't comfortable with the robbery and the fact yeah. that. Uh, my mum doesn't know the difference between Moses and my son. So she watches it, that's my that's my boy. Yeah. So she was just a bit like, why are you robbing the wall? Why did you do that? I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's not me, okay? <laughs> but yeah, she liked she liked she liked she liked it. She thought it was epic. Now Alex, this is your this is a big moment for Pest uh, that we've just moved past, his little exchange with Sam. 
and he's been quite flirty with Sam. <laughs> What's yeah. the deal with Pesticles um, and Sam? I think, you know, he probably kind of likes her, but he probably knows he's got no chance in hell, so I think he's just kind of taking the piss to see where it leads. Trying it on for, for just in case. Yeah, for shits and giggles. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. And now Brewis is becoming a little more one of the team here, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's becoming the Jerome boy. He's becoming the <laughs> yeah. Jerome, right? He's taking over as the... As <laughs> the <laughs> as <laughs> Dr. Dr. Fox. Yeah, it's, um, I quite like this bit because, you know, when... Bruce and Pest connect at this point, it really kind of, it kind of shows that, you know, he's just kind of, as you said, been accepted sort of thing. Mm. Now, you know, now Luke Treadaway is a very analytical actor. I mean, as yeah. is Jody and, uh, and uh, Nick. But Luke particularly did a lot of quite deep, down foraging work for his, like, character. Mm -hmm. did, did any of you guys talk to him about that or work with him? Or did you just did you just uh, kind of uh, perform in the moment on the set? Well, our characters. Yeah. I think, well, personally, I know I did a lot. I did research uh, on my character as well, like, because I know obviously, growing up in Hackney, you kind of know, like, you you grow up with people that are kind of in that kind of lifestyle, and I kind of like chilled out with a few guys for a little bit and see what kind of goes on and stuff and we did a lot I, will, I know me and John done a lot of character work together on our characters especially like just me and him on the phone and stuff talking a lot about our characters and trying to work like what the root of why they're doing everything is so I did a lot of character work anyway Anybody else? Did anybody else do anything oh, yeah, in particular was, to prepare? I was doing sign? a lot of character work like at home and with my brother as well like I was just like I kept going through everything and like every line what I would say I would think why is Big saying it like there's a meaning like so knowing by the person's lines you could kind of know what type of person they are as well so I was and I kind of got like he's kind of like youths growing up in South London these days they're kind of like a word what people would use is gas like they're just what does that mean? In, gas mean that it means not full of their self, but hyped up and extra hyped up over hyped the top. That like mm. some someone that like a phrase would be someone's gassed you. That like someone's just told him he's better than what he is. Right, just, and they believe that. And they actually believe. Oh right, it. so like, pump, in like pumping hype. up your ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then yeah. you believe. You believe the hype. it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. kind of. And that's how you, that's what you felt yeah. Biggs was like. John, what did you do to prepare? I mean, obviously we we did. What three or four weeks of rehearsal? Rehearsals, yeah. So we we together we got into your characters and we analysed yeah. that the lines. But I'm interested to know what you did before we got to that I, stage. But or? I think I think with with me it was kind of trying to get the character during the rehearsal process. I mean the audition process because my first audition was very loud, very comedic. So you you try to get me down, like right, get all right. all that big stuff and get it down to yeah. that character. So that meant going back to watch season four of The Wire. Right. Particularly uh, Michael's character and um, asking questions around my estate because I didn't understand the whole, how the whole drug thing works out. Yeah. So trying as much as possible like to to like get get back to that because I was working at the time. I wasn't in my area yeah. to hear what's new. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But trying to get back to that element. I kind of find in Moses in myself that element of myself which is the silence and which is kind of taking things in. Trying to make that element of myself control this whole other person. Yeah. Pesticles. Um, I didn't... Well, I did, but I don't really want to go into what I did to prepare. Okay, to fair enough. Leon Jones the third. Um, yeah, I was like, looking at like, I watched like, a lot of movies actually, because like, in a lot of movies you see these like, like individuals and like, the, um, brain box. I even watched a couple like, spy movies and that, like, to see how people like, would work stuff out as well and like just f their thinking like, yeah because Jerome does a lot of thinking as well and he likes to work stuff out as well so who would you say your your favorite actors are your heroes are your your idols are on screen friends who would you say yours are oh on British or just in general anywhere uh, I've got loads I'm I'm just gonna say free uh, Shia LaBeouf. Oh, man. Shia <laughs> LaBeouf. Yeah. Will Smith. Oh, oh my God. And also, Sean Bean. 
Mm. Now, what's what what uh, what work that Sean Bean's done? That Do you like the rings? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a Transformers fan as well. I'm Will Smith. He's he's a big guy. I, I, I like him a lot. Um, who else? Flip. I like Johnny Depp. I like what he does with his characters as well. Yeah. Like, he does a lot of work as well. Um, third one, I don't know. That's pretty good, Alex. Who do you? Who would you say is up um, there for your heroes? If I had to pick one, it would have to be Johnny Depp because his characters, you know, he always kind of adds this weird kind of sense of, you know. Craziness to yeah, what he does. Yeah, to, to every character he does, and I quite like that. What about you, John Boyega? Denzel Washington. Right. Um, now, people Shia often LaBeouf. say that you look like a young Denzel. Do you like that? I don't mind. It doesn't do anything bad to my career. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make it any worse. But you're, you're a good age to be uh, one of Denzel's kids as well, right? Yeah, if, if, he, if he wants to cast me as Denzel's son in a film, I'm so down for that. Me and Leon's already written the script. Yeah, so. we've written, <laughs> yeah, we've written the script already. We've yeah, we've got the whole title. Film. Oh, what's oh we haven't got, we ain't got that. That's the only thing can you, we can you give us. Can you give us the, the pitch? What's the pitch? Father and son are rebels. Go around robbing banks. Yeah. And nice. You yeah. and Denzel. Yeah, me and Denzel. And what, Le- uh, Leon? You going to direct? Um, yeah, as well. I yeah. think Le- Leon's that guy, in, like in the in the station, going, "Yeah, we got we got F 18s or some shit." So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, go on. No, 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 no. And then me and Denzel run in slow motion, just going, <laughs> shoot out the place. That's yeah. going to be. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. When's yeah. it coming out? Uh, it's coming out. Work in progress. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and Simon Lowe, who, are, who are your big idols? Who do you watch um, on, the, on the big screen and love? Will Smith a lot. I like Will Smith a lot. Um, and I've always said that he's played in Holby City. Do you know Kwame? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, Say his I'm name a, again. Kwame Kwame. Who works with him? Yeah, I, yeah John yeah. was telling me. He worked, no, I didn't. He was oh. meant to plan that. Like, oh. <laughs> Kwame, yeah. I, I like the way he acts a lot, and I would say Johnny Depp as well, because like he's played lots of different characters, and he always seems to be like when I'm watching him, it's always like I'm inspired like what he does, mm. like mm. like raw. He how the hell did he manage <laughs> to get to work that out with that character? Like he's yeah, he's a genius. Mm. I got one more as well. Actually. Go on, Heath Ledger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could go on for we could go on for days about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So listen, let's let's talk to Mr. John Boyega now about this this hero run. Oh yeah. Baby. So this is right towards the end of the schedule. This is one of the last things we filmed, right? Mm-hmm. And we actually filmed it quite quickly because we were shooting on two studios simultaneously, or two yeah. or three sets. In fact, we had three sets going simultaneously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk to us about doing this, John. It was amazing. Loved it. This bit was a bit scary because you made it hard. <laughs> like, because you, you, you wanted me to do that sofa stuff. Like, like what's that? <laughs> I, 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 no, that's I, cool. But it, it looks, it looks so cool now. But mm. when I was on set, I was like, "What's wrong with this boy? <laughs> Why is he telling me to do this?" But then it looked so cool. I had to work out with Wesley as well. So look at my arms. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> no, I think bit of this run's coming up this now. That bit there. Boom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was amazing to do. Terry actually gave me the idea to start off low. Really? Since I've just come from a jump down the stairs. And you're oh, yeah. hitting quite an amazing stance there. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. mid stride. Mm-hmm. Tensing up. Was yeah. that Tensing all? up. Leon, Leon told me to tense my arms. Yeah, look at them, look at them. Yeah, just to, yeah. <laughs> that was the hardest bit to film. Throwing we came back that to re- carcass. Yeah, we, we did reshoots with that, with that bit. It was heavy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Now we should, we, should, um, we should talk about reshoots because we shot for an extra three or four days on Attack the Block and sometimes people in the real world think that you do that when things kind of have gone wrong but actually it's something most movies do I'd say like 99% of movies do that because there's so little time that what you have to do is get your wide shots first do you know what I mean? Am I explaining yeah. this properly? So you get the wider shots first, so that if you run out of time and you need to get a close-up, you can usually restage that close-up without having to build the whole set. Yeah. Yeah. So the logical way to shoot a film is wider shots first, then get tighter and tighter. Mm. So on lots of films, you end up with a little basket of close-ups that you still need because you haven't had time to do them. So you'll go back and get a few more days and get little close-ups and inserts and stuff. 
And that's what we were doing here with the reshoots. And then sometimes you take the opportunity to improve something. Yeah, this was reshoots. Or make a plot point stronger. I wanted a reshoot. You I'd wanted a reshoot. No, on on the reshoots, I, I like. I'd literally just come back from Miami, and yeah. like, there was one, <laughs> like you, you can't even t like. I mean, normally just watching it, you can't really tell unless you look properly. But like, there's one scene <laughs> where I'm like, quite like normally just like light, and then. <laughs> It cuts to like this close up, and I'm like tanned, and it quickly <laughs> goes back. That's uh, in Sam's flat yeah, when you say, Sam's What's flat. wrong with the area? And the only person that a little really, bit really of suntan was like my mum. She was like, You look kind of darker there. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think over the over the over the course of the shoot, you guys became more confident? Can yeah. you can you see your performances getting better? Yes, in yeah. Your yes definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think we got a more of a sense of character, kind of as it went on mm. so and like i don't know different kind of and little relationships like the friendship and stuff. Yeah. as well like the bonds between us and did you start feeling sad towards the end of the shoot did yeah. you start yeah, having yeah, a man. feeling of that it was going to be over soon mm. yeah i didn't want it to end and I, I, I would miss like the boys as well. yeah man i think i think i started feeling it since when like friends was offset for a bit i'll be like oh where's friends where's leon like there <laughs> And no, what did man. you? Uh, what things did you enjoy most about just the day-to-day -day life of, of being on a on, on a film set? Because there are downsides. You've got to get up incredibly early. You don't get much sleep. You, 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 your time's not your own, really. But there are plus sides as well. What what, what are the plus sides? Craft. <laughs> now, what's craft, Alex? It's um. It was kind of like it's kind catering. of like a catering Hi. service, but um. They deal with mostly like sandwiches, snacks, drinks. So you like the fact that there was sort of a tuck shop. The whole yeah, time that you with can kind of like, if, especially the the greatest thing about it is like, I'd come in at say six in the morning, and I'd just say to him right, espresso, drink it, another one, drink it, another one, drink it, and then I'd be all right. So it's like, you're yeah, just demanding espresso. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just man. like espresso, panini, human, yeah, human. Panini is the one. I invented, <laughs> I invented a jelly and peanut butter panini, which yeah. I'm proud of. Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And let's talk about this the, the the very end of the movie that's that's coming up now. So we we have Sam, kind of suggesting that she's going to tell the police the truth, and that even though Moses will probably be held accountable for the mugging, there may be some mitigating circumstances. Yeah. And then this little piece we shot between Pest and and Moses in, in the police van. We shot a lot of different takes of this, didn't we, to try yeah. and get the right the smile, smile for, yeah. for Moses. Yeah. What, what's that smile saying to you, John? What do you think it's saying about the character? I think, number one, what was hard about getting that smile was um, I had to think about everything that I had been through, like Moses' character had been through throughout the whole night. And um, it was hard to get that smile in because I was, I was like, oh, why is he smiling for when these boys are dead? And blah, blah, blah. But it was, it's actually kind of like bringing out the the grace and the rise to redemption and the whole thing kind of like yeah like it's over now. like it's over now yeah, do you know we, what i mean we finally did it you know yeah and for me it's the first moment when moses smiles in an unaffected completely sincere way yeah yeah, yeah. and it's the first time you probably see the real moses like exactly. like the child that he the was child, before yeah. he started turning yeah, into yeah, this yeah, guy yeah, that yeah. had to defend himself and be the big man yeah yeah. Because because he's feeling all that love and and support and mm -hmm. from his community. Yeah. Defo. Defo. And that's yeah. it. The film is finished. Oh man. Oh, oh what a man. shame. Um, Are you happy, on. guys, with these little moments that we chose of you at the end here? Yeah. 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 The idea here was to show everybody, you know, just to underline, you know, well, first of all, to make it clear what your names are and who you are so that we give you as good a launch as possible. Yeah. And the other idea was to, to was to show people that it's all pretend, mm -hmm. that even though it might have been scary and yeah, thought provoking so, yeah. and intense and dark, it's actually just a film. A film yeah. and a bit of yeah. fun, and you're not really those kids, and this yeah. doesn't exist. And mm -hmm. so, so what do you think Attack the Block means? What do you think? Do you think it has a message as a film? Do you think there's something other than a kind of um, crazy alien romp yes. there? Do you think there's? Do, do, do you, would you like people to take something away from the film, kind of thing? Who wants to answer that? Yeah, um, France. I think in the media a lot, um, teenagers from council estates are portrayed like really bad and robbing people and 
stabbing people and just portrayed as monsters really. Yeah. And this film kind of shows that when the real monsters come down and they're actually faced with like a real threat and everyone's kind of depending on them, that they really step up to the challenge and that you realise, oh, they're not so evil and bad. They're just normal and they can do good as well. Yeah. Well and said. I think it kind of shows that it's not that even if they are in a cancelled state, like in the so-called hood, they still have feelings too, like everyone cries, everyone feels it, like we're all family and it's like that normally people would think for the snitch as Sam, um, that we became friends with her but it didn't take, although it wasn't long, no, although it was long, we still became friends with her, mm. like, it just goes to show that we're not like mean, like, shut up, go away, I'll stab you. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that, that there are different possibilities within yeah. any human being, like there's the potential for good and bad, yeah. for friendship or, you know, to, to, to keep someone at a distance. What do you think, John? I think, I think with all these, ev everyone's always going to mention stereotypes. I think a stereotype is just an aspect of what is real, do you know what I mean? And this film is just showing another aspect about people who make the right decisions, and which is what the media fails to you know, draw people's attention to, the, the kids that actually turn around and say, no, I don't want this life, and kind of takes responsibility of their actions and like carries on with, with life, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I think this is just a visual representation of that with aliens. <laughs> So that's it, the film's over. Say goodbye to everybody. Woo. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening. Yeah. Arriva Dirty, homie. Later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Do you get everyone fighting for the last word? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Yeah, so let's leave it as that. 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 Let's leave it as that